Hi, I wanted to take time during this um, situation to read a book out loud that I love. So for your, all your little kids, if they want to sit around and read, or any of my former students, if they want to sit down and read, that's great. Um, I'm going to be reading one of my favorite books ever, like I said, and it is called The Littles. It's a level third grade, um, 30 month, but because I'm reading out loud, you guys will be able to understand it. I'm also going to put at the end of every chapter, there's about one to two questions that I'm going to ask you guys. So at the end of the video, I can give the answers um, after a little bit of a like break to let you guys answer the last question. I'll give you guys the answers or you can pause it before I give the answers and you can answer it as a family or you can shoot me a message here on Facebook with your answers. Okay, so. I'm going to get kind of cozy if I have to interrupt. I'm sorry. I do have River here with me, and hopefully she'll just take a nap. But I'm going to begin reading. It's called The Littles. And here's the cover again. You can make a prediction on what you think the story is going to be about, just based on the cover. And it's by John Peterson. So chapter one. William T. Little and his family were tiny people. They lived in a house owned by George W. Big. Mr. Big and his family didn't know the Littles were living with them. The Littles kept out of sight. They lived in tiny rooms in the walls of the house. The Littles looked almost like people you see every day, but they were very much smaller. Mr. Little was only six inches tall, and he was big for a little. The other Littles were even smaller. In one way, the Littles did not look like other people. They had tails. The Littles were proud of their tails. They kept them combed and brushed, and sometimes the women curled their tails when they wanted to look especially nice. The Littles took everything they needed from the Bigs. Usually, the Bigs didn't know anything was missing. But once in a while, Mr. Big would say, Now where did that thing go? I had it right here a minute ago. It seems to have disappeared. Only last week, their son Henry shouted, Hey, Ma, where's my red socks? I can't find them anywhere. And of course, the Littles got all their food from the Bigs. When the Bigs had roast beef for dinner, the Littles had roast beef for dinner too. The Bigs didn't know it, but the electrical socket on the kitchen counter was a secret door. As soon as the big family were busy eating their cake or pie or jello, the littles would dash through the door. They would take what they needed of the leftover dinner scraps and be back through the door within seconds. The littles helped Mr. Biggs in return for the things that they took. Only the bigs didn't know it. For one thing, the littles were good at fixing things. They ran back and forth inside the walls, repairing the electrical wires whenever they needed it. The Littles were good plumbers, too. On cold winter days, they kept the outside water pipes from freezing. Often, they had to stay up all night keeping the pipes warm by candle fire. Mr. Big would never understand why his plumbing and electricity worked so well. I can't believe it, he would say. I have less trouble with this old house than my neighbors do with their brand new houses. He would shake his head. I guess they don't make houses the way they used to. Are you ready for your two questions? Here's the first one. What are two ways the littles are different than other people? Two ways that they're different. Second question. How did the littles help the big family? All right, chapter two. And by the way, if there's any big pictures, I will show them, but right now there are no pictures yet. Chapter two. One day in May, the littles were together in their living room. The two children, Tom, 10 years old, and Lucy, eight, were on the sofa next to their mother. Granny Little sat on her rocking chair knitting a red sweater for Tom. Don't know why Henry Big made such a fuss when we took his old red socks. She said, one of them had a real bad hole in the toe. Uncle Pete, holding his cane, leaned against the fireplace. You have enough red yarn there, Granny. He said to start a knitting factory. Mr. Little was walking back and forth. 
Please sit down, Will, said Miss Little. You're making me nervous. Now there's no reason for us to be worried, said Mr. Little. The Bigs have gone on vacation before. But never for three months, said Mrs. Little. And what about this new family, said Uncle Pete? The Newcombs. He shook his cane in the air. We don't even know them. We don't have to, Uncle Pete. I keep telling you that, Mr. Little said. If they're good enough for the Bigs... They're good enough for the Littles. Besides, they'll only be here for three months. We can stand anything for three months. Why do they want to rent the house for only three months, said Tom. Isn't that kind of silly? The new combs are from the city, said Mr. Little. Sometimes city people rent houses in the country while the owners are away on vacation. It's like a vacation for city people to live in the country for a while, said Mrs. Little. I don't like it, said Uncle Pete. Suppose they bring a cat with them. Lucy Little moved closer to her mother. Oh, mother, suppose they bring a cat with them. Mrs. Little put her arm around her daughter. Granny Little stopped rocking. Did he say they have a cat? She nodded towards Uncle Pete. No, no, said Mr. Little. He said, suppose they have a cat. Oh, said Granny Little. She started rocking again. I hope they don't bring a cat. Aw, who's afraid of an old cat, said Tom. I wish everybody would stop talking about cats, said Lucy. I am afraid of cats. She looked from person to person. Please, let's stop talking about cats. All right, that was chapter two. Here are your questions. Why is a different family staring, staying, not staring, at the Biggs home? So why is a different family, the Newcombs, staying at the Biggs home? Question number two. What is Lucy afraid of? Here we go, chapter three. There was a secret lookout place behind the light switch in the hall of the Biggs house. One of the screws was missing. The empty hole was large enough for a little to look and listen through. Mr. Little spent all the next day at the lookout place. Tom Little stayed with him. They were waiting for the new combs. So I'll show you the picture. There's Mr. Little looking outside the hole of the electrical socket. And there's little Tom. When they come, be careful of that light switch, Tom, said Mr. Little. Likely as not, it's the first thing they will do is turn on the hall light. Sometime in the late afternoon, Mr. Little thought he heard a noise. He looked through the hole. Are they coming? said Tom. Not yet. Hold it. Mr. Little heard a key in the front door lock. Yes, here they come now. Shh. Where's the hall light, Charlie? It was a woman's voice. I have it, said Charles Newcomb. There were sparks inside the lookout place as the lights turned on. Tom Little jumped. His father turned from the peephole and put his fingers to his lips. The bright light from the hall came through the peephole into their dark hiding place. Tom could see his father's face clearly. Mr. Little returned to the hole. What a drive, said Mrs. Newcomb. She sat down heavily on the suitcase. Give me a minute to rest and I'll help you with the rest of the bags. No need to help Miss N, said Mr. Newcomb. I'll get the bags myself. No tipping, please. It's part of the service here at the Big Summer Hotel. Mrs. Newcomb laughed. Where do you get the energy, she said. From the country. <laughs> From the country, said Mr. Newcomb. I didn't realize how much I'd miss it. I get energy from just looking at all the trees and space. We are going to be here three months. Think of it. I am, said Mrs. Newcomb. I'll still have to get three meals a day, only now it'll be in a strange kitchen. Listen, Liz, said Mr. Newcomb. You've come here to write, and I've come here to paint. Nothing else is important. Sure, sure, Mrs. Newcomb laughed. Tell me that after eating hamburger for a week. I mean it, Liz, said Mr. Newcomb. Forget about the housework. Write those stories 
you want to write. As for me, he twirled around and did a little dance. This isn't my house. I'm not fixing anything and I am doing nothing. If the faucets drip, let them drip. I may not even take out the garbage. You really mean it, don't you? Said Mrs. Newcomb. I sure do, said Mr. Newcomb. I am here to paint masterpieces and that is what I'm going to do. And when I'm not doing that, I'm going to do nothing. I'll loaf, sit in the sun and eat. He laughed. Hamburgers, of course. All right, chapter three, only one question. What are Mr. and Mrs. Newcomb's hobbies while staying in the country? So what are they gonna do while they're there in the country? All right, you ready for your answers from this chapter? So if you don't want the answers and you wanna just send it to me, stop the video now. But here are our answers. So question one, what are two ways the littles are different than other people? First way. Their size, they're significantly smaller. Mis remember, Mr. Little is only about six inches tall. And the other thing that's different is they have tails. Remember, the girls even like to have them curled for special occasions. Question number two. How did the Littles help the big family? Well, they do repairs. They help out with the electricity and with the plumbing. Uh, question number three, why is a different family staying at the Biggs home? So the different family is the Newcombs and they are staying at the Biggs home because the Biggs are on vacation and the Newcombs are going to be on vacation in their house. Question number four, what is Lucy afraid of? Cats. She's so scared of cats. She asks her whole family to stop talking about them. And question number five, what are Mr. and Mrs. Newcomb's hobbies while staying in the country? Mr. Newcomb is going to paint and Mrs. Newcomb is going to write. Hope you're excited for the rest of the book.